Yeah. So after that, after having my son, I was sure that, you know, me, I'm, I'm, I'm across the river now. I'm, yeah. Struggle is behind me. Yes. I didn't know what lay ahead. So total, I've had three miscarriages and one stillborn. So even just saying it is just one of those things I don't even like talking about yeah. because it's, it's really heavy. <laughs> Everybody, welcome to Being Kambua. I'm so excited about this podcast because it's been a long time coming. I can't tell you exactly why um, it has taken me so long from the time that God put this on my heart to do and getting to this place. It really has taken me a long time. But I'm finally here and I'm so grateful. And, and the reason that I decided to create this space is because I realized that a lot of the things that I have overcome have been as a result of people God has put in my life, people who have spoken something into my life, people I have interacted with, even on social media, who I have never met, who said something that lifted me in a moment. So I decided that I am going to create a space here where I get to share my story, I get to share my journey, but I also get to bring you phenomenal people, women who have amazing stories that are going to lift you in an attempt to have authentic, um, sometimes uncomfortable conversations so that we can break certain stereotypes. So I shared with you last time a little bit about my journey. Uh, many of you had no idea that I had a miscarriage when I started my journey into motherhood and obviously still navigating what that meant for me years later. It's still something that I have been unpacking slowly. My first, first guest today, I am so excited about because I love her. I've had the privilege, the honor of doing life with her, having a front row uh, seat in her life. We have cried together. We have laughed together. <laughs> and we're here to do a little bit more of that, but also just to give you an insight of her life. She's an amazing content creator, all things motherhood. She is a great mother. She is a great wife. Her name is Julie Karaoke. Hey, girl. <laughs> <laughs> when you said you've cried together, I just felt them coming. <laughs> Let's not start no, so early. No, we can't start like that, no. <laughs> Yay, we are happy, excited. We're, Thank you for having me. Yeah, Yay. I'm so happy to have you. You look gorgeous, first Thank of all. Thank you. Thank you so much, Kamboa. Thank you. So do you. Asante. We learn from you. We <laughs> Julie, thank you for saying yes to me. Um, I don't take that for granted because I know that our stories, our journeys are so heavy and so personal yes. that it's not, you know, it's not just come over, share your story. Yes. It's it's really, it's making you in a way relieve things that you have overcome, yes. that you're healing from. Yes. So I really, really thank you for coming over to thank talk to us. Thank you for having me. Such an honor. Yeah. Mostly it's me calling you for my little things, but being here sitting uh, across from you, yeah. it means the world and I'm really, really honored. Mm -hmm. Can't wait to see what this yeah. turns into. Yeah, what yes. this becomes, and right? And congratulations on your podcast. Oh, thank you. Girl, you're, you're my do... first <laughs> guest. I am. Yes, you are. Oh my goodness. I'm a big deal. <laughs> Mom, I made it. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> Mama, we made it. <laughs> Asante, thank you so much for having me. Karibu sana. Mm. So I want us to like dive right into it. Okay. By the time you got married, yes. Julie, had you, were you always those people who, because there are people who from when they were little, you know, young girls, mm. they always knew I'll get married one day, I'll have children. Mm. And then there are people who don't have that. And yeah. I sort of fell in that category. Yeah. I knew it would happen someday, but I was never the girl who dreamt mm. of I'll have kids. I was never yeah. that girl. Yeah. What was it like for you, the idea of motherhood, yeah. even before you got married? Well, I know for a fact I've always wanted to be a mom. A wife, maybe not, but a mom. Okay. That one for sure I knew. Yeah. Uh, when I was in form two, I wrote in my notebook that I want three fat babies. That, oh. Those are the words I wrote. Yeah. And <laughs> Chunky babies. Chunky. Oh, those, those you can eat. I wanted those. Yes. And I always had this idea that it would be super easy for me because, yeah. I mean, like, I never knew that people struggle. Yeah. I, and honestly, I never knew people struggle getting kids. Yeah. So I just knew for me it would be automatic. I'd have my children there because I've always wanted to be a mom. Yeah. Yeah. I, I like what you're saying because we, I think, I think many of us imagine yeah, yeah. that being a mom is just deciding. I want yeah, to yeah, I want to get pregnant. I want yeah, to have a baby, and it yeah, just happens. Like that, yeah. No, it doesn't. Or you look back and you realize, <laughs> I was so naive. <laughs> yeah. But also being able to appreciate, um, you know, you know, if you're a woman who has not 
struggled yeah. in any way appreciating the fact that it's a it, it's a privilege that you can yes. actually just plan to get pregnant and yes. it happens yes 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 um so you get married <laughs> i get married so let me just take you back a little bit Please. when we were still dating with my husband we did it for a very long time yes. seven years Seven so, years. Seven years. Okay. I don't know what you were thinking, but anyway, we were, we were in school. We were yes. poor. Like, no. Anyway, so, <laughs> so there's a time. Mm-hmm. Okay, so, so, so we're getting deep and I go deep really fast. Go, go right there. There's a time uh, when we were still dating. We were, we were in an event somewhere and I sat on him. Yeah. So when Misha, you're in love, blah, blah, blah. I sat on him. Wow. And then mm-hmm. because of the, I was such a naive, oh, let me say a naive Christian. Yeah. I, I went back to the States. I was in college. Yes. So I was on holiday. I went back. I thought I was pregnant because of sitting because on him. You... Yeah. So let me tell you how bad it all it got. My belly started to grow. <laughs> My period didn't come for two months. Julie. I promise you, Kambo, I took a picture even in front of the mirror yes. of my baby bump. Oh my gosh. And I sent it to my boyfriend then. He was in KU. Yes. And he started becoming like depressed because he was like, what do we do? Can I can come live in the States? I was yes. like, I, I lead worship in my church. I'm going to be the embarrassment in church. Wow. You know what I mean? And I started having all these thoughts of, you know. So I share this story because, oh okay, gosh. after the whole, it was really bad. Yes. Like, if you go into the details of it, it was really, really bad. Do you think it's because of of the kind of, should I say sex education or lack thereof? Lack thereof, yes. Where you were just yes. told, if you go near a boy, That's you'll it. get pregnant. So yeah. that's how you, you sat on him. Yeah, so me just sat on him and I knew. Woo, yeah, it's done. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> you tell me what and, yeah, in our church, he used to be an equad in the, at the front. Oh my God. So he knew I was going to go through all that. I knew my husband would have to stop everything he's doing and come stay with me in the States. Or I'd have to stop everything and come stay with him to lamb Toto, you know? And, you know, I tortured him. I tortured myself. I was in such turmoil. Oh my God. And then two days later, my period came and I was bloated because of I traveled from Kenya and all that. And yeah. knowing marriage is when I started thinking, when I started struggling, conceiving, I was mm-hmm. like, why did I think it was that easy? Like, mm-hmm. yeah. So, Have you ever heard of phantom pregnancy? Yes, I have. Because that's yes. what that's making me think of, yes. where yes. you actually imagine and believe. Yes. And I, I think at some point I experienced a level of that, Indeed. where you actually think you're pregnant yes. And your body starts to manifest yes. as though you are. Yes, you know everything. your period delays. Yes. you get you're getting a bump. You're... Yes, it's 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 a thing. It's a real thing. Yeah, let's go back. So okay. you get married. Yes. to Pastor Pete Karaoke. Yes, All right. amazing man. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> tall, light, and handsome. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, we get married. Uh, it was such so exciting, and we told ourselves, "Let's give us a, give ourselves six months." Yeah. To cool a happy, okay, you know, good, then yeah. I started thinking about children. Mm-hmm. So I was on birth control for the first four months, but it did go very well with my body. Okay. And then I had to stop birth control. Okay. And then now we, we were trying. What happened yeah. to your body? I was gaining weight really fast. Mm-hmm. And then uh, what had happened else? I was doing the patch, you know, the patch that you yep. put on your skin. Yes. There's something else that happened, but I remember I was just like, I think it was mood swings. I was just not myself. Yeah. And I was like, oh, babe, I think I'm going to stop using this. And yeah. he was supportive. And mm-hmm. we were like, you know what? We are open to having kids. Yeah. We are old enough. We mm-hmm. feel we can, can take care of this. And yeah. I, you know, I was really envisioning yeah. my children. And yeah. I was just like, God, I can't wait to be a mom. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Six months, you have a great time. Oh, gosh. Yes. And then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then, um, okay, six months after that, so it's a year down. And I'm like, okay, everything is so quiet down here. Like yes. nothing, nothing, nothing. Yes. So I went to a local hospital near my neighborhood, mm. and I explained to this doctor. Yeah. He's not even a specialist; just one of the doctors there. And I told him, um, "This and this we've been trying for now a year." And then he just wrote on the card a big one: "Go mm. for this test." And then he wrote infertility. Whoa. Yes, I still have that card. I told it to her, but I still have it. Yes. Okay. H- yes. Had he done any tests? On nothing you? on me. I just met him that day, and he just labeled me. And you know what? I took that label and I knew I was infertile. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Okay, I can't even, because, you know, yeah. they usually we're told um, when it's yeah. up until a year, yeah. Yeah. you have nothing to worry about. Yes. And technically, it was six months because yes. for six months you are not trying yes. to have yes, children. It's true. So it's you true. still hadn't even fallen under, under the bracket the one, of. Yeah. You're right. You know, you're that, actually right. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, okay, so you've been labeled as infertile yes. or that you have. Issues of fertility, yes, infertility. Yes, yes. Oh. From there, where do you go? I think I went and just, now I was in panic mode. My yeah. husband was very relaxed because he knew, baby, you're not even, 
it will happen. He didn't even worry for a second. Wow. So me now, I went into panic mode. Now I'm like, okay, now we need to do things. We need to see specialists. We need to do this. And I started really pushing him to seeing special doctors, going for altar calls. Oh, which he was not too happy about. Okay. Um, that's another story for another. Day. I feel like can you t- <laughs> let's 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 sit there a okay. little bit. <laughs> so in this couple's retreat, yes, we are one point one one in, one into marriage one point five, and then the pastor goes ahead and says, "If there's is anyone is struggling to get children, please stand up." Mm-hmm. And uh, nobody's standing up. Mimi, I shoot up. Yes, you know, and I had me try to try, try to pull me down. Me, I'm like, wow. and then you know later on it was like. When did we agree we are struggling to have kids? When did we agree on oh, this? That was and strange. and you know he felt like I'd embarrassed him, mm. and you know that that was a valid reason. But yeah. for me, it just felt like baby, we need to be prayed for. Yes, I think I'd started feeling in my spirit there would be a struggle, but yeah. for him it was like babe, like we've not even yeah yeah the guys here have been fifteen years like why mm-hmm. are you standing up? Mm-hmm. And the guys prayed for us and you know that yeah um yeah but from that time it would be now another two years of just trying and yeah, yeah. and doing mm-hmm. tests. And tests Tests and really invasive tests. Yeah, yeah. Of the tests that you did, which one do you feel was the most difficult? Or which moment in that um, trying to seek or to get yeah. answers yeah. did you feel like, okay, I just, I'm feeling like this yeah. is too much. I did the HSG, the one that oh. checks if your fallopian tubes are blocked. I have not recovered from it till today. <laughs> There's a lady who was giving her story on TikTok the other day and she narrated my story. Mm. It was so unprofessionally done. And Kuth, the guy was, he looked dirty in my opinion. Yes. It was so bad. And then also the spam contest. It was not very nice. Before we even get to the spam contest, Mm -hmm. the the HSG test, because there's a lot of people who are like, okay, I don't even know what that term means. Mm -hmm. Break it down for us a little bit. So a radiologist, I believe these guys would do the yes. x-rays. Mm-hmm. So they put some dye in your vagina and it goes up your fallopian yes. tubes. Yes. Yes. So to check. So if the dye passes all the way, they know you're not blocked. But yes. if they see a blockage, yes. you'll have to go through a procedure to clear that blockage. Yeah. Yeah. So for me, everything went through. Mm-hmm. But not the process yeah. of it and the way they handle you. Yes. Yeah, I, I feel you. I think for me, that goes down in history as the worst, of, the worst. of them all. And of course, yeah. they were like, oh, no, it's not that bad. It wouldn't be that it bad. bad. It was bad. It, it was that bad. It was 100%. I think yeah. even worse than childbirth. Two years, you've done tests, and da, 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 you don't know what's going on. Yeah. And then what? So one day, I I start cramping really bad. My monthly period, of course, has come, and they usually cramp, but this one is really bad. Like, mm. I remember it was a Sunday, I didn't go to church. Mm. That was a big one for me because I don't miss church for yeah. nothing. Yeah. So I'm really cramping. Like, I'm, everyone I'm calling is like, hey, cramps, you know? Yeah. And um, the bleeding isn't much, just mm. a little, but I'm just cramping. And then we're going to see some of our friends. So we went and visited them that night. Mm-hmm. And I remember he gave me muscle relaxants because yeah. I was really complaining the whole time. Mm-hmm. Because we lived near uh, one of the big hospitals here. Yes. Uh, they told me, please go to this hospital and just have, have it checked. Yeah. So we go inside, we go in. In, wait the the waiting period was so long the whole time i'm like holding my stomach like yeah. this mm-hmm. and uh, nothing in my head has told me anything is wrong yeah. it's just like these cramps are really too much mm-hmm. but that time i must uh, it would be nice to say i had already started taking some fertility meds okay at that point yeah uh but nothing had happened t- to us at all mm-hmm. so i you know uh, so the doctor checks uh he 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 calls for the beta hcg so that's where they draw your blood and they're able to tell if you're pregnant or not, through your blood. Uh-huh. So they do that, and it comes out that I'm um, pregnant. Alas. But um, it's coming out. So I'm in the doctor's office like, Ati? Ati? Like, what? Oh. Yeah, so so that's how he broke it to me. Like, um, it was an Indian doctor. Yeah. So he was like, um, Julie looks like you're pregnant, but it looks like you're losing it. And, uh, you know, and I'm just like, me. So this is the weird part. I wasn't sad. I was actually very happy because I was like, there's some action in there. Like, okay. That the- I've conceived, wow. you know, but yeah. now later on is when the emotions would cut, cut, yeah. catch up to me. Yeah. And I remember um, not going to my guy the next day mm-hmm. and telling him this had happened. And he was also happy. He was like, okay, unfortunately we've lost it, but the news is some activity in there. Mm-hmm. And uh, for, that's the angle, like the first one, because yes. I, it just felt like a normal cramp. Yeah. And all that. Yeah. But that was my first experience with early uh, pregnancy. Um, yeah. Miscarriage to six weeks. Mm-hmm. Not six weeks. Six weeks. Mm-hmm. Is that what they, the, because I've seen a term that is usually written when you've had a miscarriage and they write uh, spontaneous abortion. Spontaneous abortion, that's the exact word. 
you know, know the wording of it the wording yeah, of it's it like you you are both you remove intention yeah and, it, and you yeah. want to say no i did not no i did not i did yeah, not I, um, yeah. <laughs> it's just yeah. some of those terms i guess <laughs> yeah so yeah actually on the on the card it was a yellow letter i remember it very well um, yeah yeah spontaneous abortion um yeah. And then the weeks, how many weeks I was, and they, uh, they, they had requested for another mm-hmm. um, scan the mm-hmm. next day, not yeah. to confirm, and they did. Yes. Um. Did you go through the process of, you know, the people who go in for a DNC, the people who are given meds, the mm. people who your body just naturally yeah. expels yeah. Um, the pregnancy? What mm. was that like for you? My body just uh, naturally. expelled it naturally. Mm. Um. I didn't do anything, and... I, now that I look back, I even didn't mourn that one. Mm-hmm. I think because it just it shocked me so much that yeah. I was shocked, happy, confused all at the same time. So yeah. I remember just feeling like, eh, okay, yeah. Yeah. you know, mm-hmm. and that was it. Yeah. yeah. You know, I can see the conflict that you yes. have where yes. you're... You're pregnant, but you're yeah. losing it. So yeah. it, it, it's a lot, it's to, a lot. to process in that I'm moment. Confused. So yeah. I can, I can mm-hmm. see why you'd mm-hmm. say you didn't even mm-hmm. grieve it because mm-hmm. it's... There's good things and there's also... You, <laughs> I don't know. Yes, it's, yes. it's very hard and to it, dissect it for that. It didn't feel painful in that right. regard. Like, yeah, it wasn't. So it was just felt like a cramp, though on the extreme. Yeah. But yeah, it didn't. And then there was no clotting or mm-hmm. anything. It just. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, it just felt, yeah. That happens. And then now you continue on trying? Actually, um, so yeah, that was in September. No. Um, yeah, September. Mm-hmm. October was pregnant. Wow. Yeah, I don't, yeah. Wow, well, fertile <laughs> that's woman. I, that's what I'm saying. I don't even know if I moan. That's amazing. Because, yeah, a few weeks later from that yes. time, I was pregnant. And now, now I get the first double line in my life. Yes. And I'm just happy, but also, oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah, so of course, I was put on progesterone, mm-hmm. um, all those medications for that. Uh, don't move too much. Don't do this, all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I was able to carry it to 41 weeks. To 41, 41 weeks. weeks. Yeah, my bouncing baby boy. Congratulations. <laughs> he's a beautiful boy. Oh, thank you. He's six years old now. And really, really, he's very talkative. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who does yeah. he get that from you? Not Pete. No, not Pete at all. That's me. That's 100% me. <laughs> he <laughs> talks a lot. That? Uh, he's, uh, he's my heart. Yeah. He's, he's just a copy of me. He's, yeah. He has the same heart, compassionate as I am. Yeah. Super sensitive like I am. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, when people look at you, Julie, because a lot of people know yeah. some of your story, yes. but they don't even realize that you had a, you had a loss like that, and yeah. you had another loss. Yes, uh, we we do know there's a loss of beautiful girl yes. that came a lot yes. later, and that yes. one a lot of people got to know yes. about. Mm. But I really want us to dwell a little more on these losses that were not so yes. talked about because. Yes. Uh, for some reason, miscarriages are not talked about much yes. because of also how casually they're handled, wow. even yeah. by the medical That's field, true. you yeah. know. Yeah. Hey, you're pregnant, but you're also losing. You know, yeah. It's, it's yeah. like, yeah. are yeah. you having fries or sauce? You know, that's what it sounds like to me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and you know, to, they don't know this is someone's, they've been praying for this for three years. They've been, yeah. um, uh, you know, it could be however long. They don't know how heavy this is for someone and you're not. Put, putting it so casually for them. Even my own gynecologist that time, yeah. when he just said, I am so happy this has happened. Yes. I know he was coming from a good place, but I just remember thinking at the back of my head, I can't say. Yeah. Some compassion would be nice. Yeah. Like, I'm so sorry this has happened, yeah. but now we'll mm-hmm. be more vigilant to the next time. Yeah. But he did encourage me that one I'll give it. Um, yeah. yeah. So after that, after having my son, I was sure that, you know, me, I'm, I'm, I'm across the river now. I'm, yeah. Struggle is behind me. Yes. I didn't know what lay ahead. So, total, I've had three miscarriages and one stillborn. So, even just saying it is that's one of those things I don't even like talking about yeah. because it's it's really heavy. Yeah. And um, when was the second miscarriage? Yeah. So after my son, mm-hmm. we started trying also when he got to one 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 year old. Mm-hmm. No, we were actively trying for another baby because we wanted when you you want them to put yes, nicely, yes. you don't give away everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so we were actively trying and it, it had taken a bit of, a, of some time. It was, mm-hmm. it was kind of a struggle. Yeah. Then I actually did eventually conceive and go, go to the doctor, the whole scan, everything perfect. Um, yeah. the, the sack is up there nice. Yes. Everything is nice. I'm feeling good. Mm-hmm. Um, so the scan shows everything is good. Mm-hmm. And, and my husband was away for work um, yeah. out of town. Yeah. So one day I wake up and I'm bleeding. 
and um, with my pregnancies, I don't bleed. So yeah. it's, it's very foreign. Yeah. I call the doctor, he says, come. So I go, mm. I start injections. So they inject me. Uh, well, I don't know what is that they inject, but I think it's one. It's I think it's still progesterone. Yeah, yeah. maybe a higher dose. Yes, yeah. yes. So mm-hmm. I was going in for that short, like three for three days, and yeah. it's in CBD. So I'd leave my house, go for the injection, go for They're the injection. They're painful. Very painful, by the as in guys, yeah. anyone going through this journey, my heart is with you because it's very painful, very yeah. intrusive. Yeah. Um. Okay. So it was in your uh, the, uh, in your behind. Mm-hmm. So they'd inject these injections, nee, 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 yeah. and then the bleeding would still continue. Mm-hmm. So one day I am back home. I've just been at the doctor's and I feel like I'm in full blown labor. Oh my goodness. Full blown labor. Mm-hmm. I'd labored with my son for 24 hours, but he had to come through cesarean section. Yes. So I know what labor is. Yeah. I'm on all fours. I'm sweating. I'm grabbing oh things. Goodness. I'm in full blown labor. Yeah. So I'm at home. Um, we had ca- called someone to watch our kid and um, the nanny was there. Yeah. And I told my husband, just take me to hospital. I am sweating. Mm. And to be even more details of that, my son was crying so much mm-hmm. because he, he didn't understand what was going on. Mm. And uh, I had to take him and breastfeed him as I'm still going wow. through this. I didn't yeah. know I was losing the baby right at that point. Yeah. I just knew that something was really wrong. Mm. So I get in the car and it was quite a distance from where we were living to the hospital I was being taken to. Mm-hmm. And now it's for labor. Yes. Like for pulling hair. My goodness. I um my feet are up on the dashboard. Yes. Anyone who'd have seen me would know this mother is giving birth in the car. Yeah. So we get to Hosi, I can't walk, I'm taken in. So they're like, Okay, are you in labor? So how many weeks are you? They think, you know, I'm giving birth. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm just eight weeks, eight weeks pregnant. Mm-hmm. I am throwing up the whole corridor. It mm-hmm. was really bad, really intense. Yeah. I sit on the bed, yelling. They're trying to administer things to me to control the way I'm feeling. I'm glib. That's how yes. bad it was. Yeah. And then I felt like going to the bathroom and I did. Yeah. And that's when the baby, yeah. Yeah. So that one was traumatizing because I knew what that was in the mm-hmm. toilet mm-hmm. and they had to flush it. Yeah. yeah, and that's a, that's an image that stays with you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And oh wow, <laughs> yeah. I'm so sorry, Julie. Um, yeah. How did you process that? Um, here is our, you know, third yeah. pregnancy. Yeah. yeah. And and I've just lost this yeah, one because now you are fully aware. And like the first time, you were yeah. fully aware that you were pregnant. Yeah, so yeah. obviously, probably started. Thinking and dreaming and planning. to my parents. You had announced. Yeah, I'd already made a sh- shirt for my, my cowboy since uh, Big Brother in April. Mm. Um, so my parents knew. Actually, the day I started cramping, I was in their house. Yeah. So I told them I'm not feeling too good. Actually, mm. they will see. Mm-hmm. So they, they were very, they were following the story very well. Yeah. So um, immediately after I left the toilet, the relief yeah. is so good. Yeah, in your like body. When, yeah, like yeah. in terms of. The pain is not there anymore. Mm. Now I'm f- I'm even talking now. I'm like, yeah. It was I was even telling my husband, gosh, I feel so good now yeah. because you know. Yeah. And then now the doctor said, come tomorrow for a scan. Mm. So the scan, the guy who was doing this, the um, imaging, mm. he was looking and then he says, oh yeah, we can see debris here, debris. So wow. it's the terminology mm. is what I usually have problems with because why you debris debris for me looks like. It was like a construction yeah. site. <laughs> that was just, yeah, <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. and mm. it looks like I don't even know how that miscarriage is still a mystery because it looked like it's exploded, like something ruptured in something, your uterus. Yeah, yeah. yeah, something did. Yeah, yeah, because it looked like particles are all over. Yeah, and that are now they had to give you the medication to, okay. to clear. clear that. Mm-hmm. Hmm. So one of our friends was very sad that that had happened to us and sent us on holiday. Okay. So immediately we were even in a very nice resort. Yeah. And I started taking the medicine. You put it under your tongue. Okay. And uh, you wait. Yeah. It did, so it what just... this medicine does, uh. it takes your uterus and squeezes it. You know, the way you wring a piece Ooh. of cloth, it does that. So I would go into... Like that at oh, night. Oh so my, my husband would have goodness. to pull me tight. Yeah. I'd shake, 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 mm-hmm. shaking everywhere. Yeah. Then the feeling would go. Next day, same thing, same thing. So it makes sure everything is removed from yes. your uterus. Yes. So that one, I didn't have to get a DNC. Yeah. Yeah. That one was eight weeks. 
so miscarriage number two. Yes. Do you feel that there was, was there any difference between how the you were handled at the hospital the first time yeah. and this time? Was there any difference or do you feel like the process was pretty much the same, very technical? Okay. Um, yeah. So the first one is because it was a foreign doctor who was handling me. Yeah. The second one, my doctors are no. So this one was very devastated as well because okay. he honestly didn't have a reason why it happened. Uh, because even the scars, I still have them. I keep everything. I don't know what I do. Yeah. Uh, but I think it's because of my story and I feel like I'll always encourage someone and I want to show them this is a proof. I'm mm. not even lying to you. Mm. The sack was very intact. Yeah. So that's what was the question, like what happened here? Yeah. Because sometimes some are really down to the cervical yes. you know, area, but yeah. that one was still very intact mm -hmm. up there. So mm -hmm. we really don't know what happened yeah. that caused that. Yeah. There's also a lot of spiritual things that I felt were happening at that same period. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I remember that one was extremely painful, extremely devastating. Yeah. Extremely, my parents also went through their own fair share of, you Grieving. know. Grief, yeah, and it was, we had a lot of questions around that. Yeah. So that was around in September. That was in September of 2018 that mm -hmm. that, that happened. And mm -hmm. yeah, that one, of course, I didn't announce. I didn't say anything. I was quiet. Yeah. People just knew Julie was going through a depressive period. They didn't know why. <laughs> or didn't know why. <laughs> and that's the thing, yeah. like with a miscarriage, yeah. especially an yeah. early yeah, miscarriage, yeah, yeah. Nobody has seen it. Nobody has seen so it. So they don't know that you're going through it. Yeah. I know a lot of women who will miscarry and tomorrow yeah. they have to show up at the office. Yes. It's business as usual. And you're carrying this heavy, heavy, heavy oh pain. That's a whole child. It's a, yeah, yeah, it is. And sometimes even children. You don't know. Yeah, you don't know. Mm -hmm. Because I feel like the minute you saw that, the two lines on that Hey, test girl. everything changes hey you look so sad let me prepare myself you know I'll have a second kid in this house you know yeah. you, there's an excitement you get me i always get a high even tell people mm -hmm. every time i see those double lines yeah it's like i get a high yes yeah. so good that's yes. it always <laughs> I always feel like I can have 10, ten children. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I believe it. <laughs> I just get such a good high. Oh, but your babies are so beautiful. Thanks. Give us 10. We won't complain. Girl, tutalea <laughs> pamoja. <laughs> tutalea diapers, yes. whatever. Yes, yes. Um, so, so, Julie, I want to know the state of your heart, the state of your mind, because I, I feel like uh, um, a miscarriage is such a huge emotional whiplash, for lack of a better word that how did you process that how did you even get to a place of entertaining the idea of trying again because in, in your situation this was very intense especially this second miscarriage yes, yes. how did you navigate it and get to a place of okay i'm at a better place i can try again so i had to take a break two months break of just allow my body to heal because i felt like it had been in a war zone mm. and then also i was also dealing with blaming my body yeah. it i i felt like it was a burial ground yeah, oh my goodness. And nobody wants to feel that way about their own body. And especially if you're trying to grow your family, I felt like it was becoming a cemetery. And that's heavy. It, it's 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 it does feel that way, but especially if it's recurred. Yeah. You know? So you start feeling, okay, maybe there's something wrong with me. Mm. Maybe there's just something looming mm. over my body that I, I still, you know, I don't know, I need to figure it out. Yeah. So I had to deal with that. I didn't do therapy, but I remember just, I was in a lot of uh, rooms where people would pray for me. So if I would go, I think because the news spread, yes, yeah. because now my husband was away for work, it was like a retreat. Yes. So even there I was told there's an emergency. Yes. Uh, yeah, and then I told Pastor Pete has lost mm -hmm. his child. Mm -hmm. um, they were expecting. So there was a lot of people now came coming in to hold us, and I think that's what really carried us. Yeah. But deep inside, I was very fearful. Mm -hmm. I was very, God, what is this? Mm -hmm. Like, I, I make it make sense to me. Yeah. And all that. Yeah. So I... I don't think like there was a clear line of now you're ready to start. I was mm -hmm. just doing life, you know, and yeah. enjoying my marriage. Mm -hmm. And then um, again, I started feeling some sort of way. I'm like, mm, this <laughs> looks familiar. This feels familiar. Yeah. Did the test, double line, excited. Mm -hmm. We go to the doctors. Um, so he's doing his scan and then he's like, hey, mom, you're saying me, when did you do the test? So I tell him. Yeah. Um, and then... He was like, please allow me to do this scan transvaginally. Oh. And you know, and they say that. I know what that rise, means. <laughs> yeah. You start lifting your eyebrows. You're just like, Sister, what? What yeah. is it now? What have you seen? And then now uh, he said, he called it a chemical pregnancy. Mm. I'm trying to remember the definition. Chemical pregnancy is where it shows, I think, you get the double line. Yes, but, but it doesn't in. show on the ultrasound. Yeah. There's nothing in the sac. Yeah. So my, my, I think my blood work would show I was pregnant. 
Yeah. But there's actually nothing on, yeah. on the ultrasound. Yeah. So he's going through this. He can't see anything. So he puts it inside my body and he's searching and he can't find anything. Oh my goodness. And uh, yeah, I, I, I'm like, <laughs> so that one I didn't have to go through the bleeding or yes. anything. Yeah. Um, there was nothing to expel. There was nothing to expel. Yeah. So um, he was very compassionate in that. Um, yeah. I think he really broke it down to me. Yeah. And then I was like, so what is this? He said, we do, we do regard this as a, a miscarriage as well. Yes. Uh, but it's different because now you won't bleed mm-hmm. or anything. Mm-hmm. Or maybe even your body has already expelled it. You do, Maybe you didn't know. Yeah. Yeah. But blood work and your urine will show you're pregnant, yeah. but it doesn't show the scan. Right. And now, in real life, you are not pregnant. Yes, yes. yes. So I also went through that. Um, so does your body of feel different? You do. You do feel pregnant. You you're feel, nauseous. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, you, you're nauseous. You have aversions. Yes. Yeah. The full... Everything. Yeah. Yeah, it's just that yeah. there's nothing in your womb, That's which is also so strange. Very strange. Yeah. So I think also, me, women who are going through this, and also men mm. uh, who are with wives who are going through this, it can take a toll on you mentally. Yes. You actually feel like you're going to go crazy mm-hmm. or you are crazy yeah. or something is just weird about yeah. the whole situation because why are you feeling this way? Why is the blood doctor showing this? Why is your, uh, your pregnancy test showing this? And then the doctor can't find anything in yeah. your stomach. Yeah. Like, make it make sense, you yeah. know? Yeah. yeah. So I also went through that. A big chunk of it was feeling like I was going to go cuckoo. Yeah, like mm-hmm. you're losing it. Yes. What did it do to your faith? There, I was still good. I think I was just yeah. cruising through life. Yeah. yeah. You're like, okay, it's part of life. <laughs> me, yeah, as in, okay, so I to remove. I think because I didn't bleed. But what I know I did that day when yeah. I got home, mm-hmm. I went and knocked myself into the bedroom. I didn't cry, I didn't shout, I didn't. So initially, when yeah. I was told. Yeah. So when I went back at home, I hung out with my baby, hung out mm-hmm. with Habit, then I went to the room and mm-hmm. I shut myself there for like three, four hours, mm-hmm. wailing. Yeah. Then Habi came and was like, babe, please don't. Um, he was trying to console me. Mm-hmm. But I was like, babe, this is still a loss, you yeah. know. And he was like, but you see, it's not even. A, he was trying to logically like look at it. There's yeah. nothing. So there's no baby. Like, stop. I yeah. was like, it's still a loss. Yes. It's still something is wrong with my body. Mm-hmm. Something is off. So let me feel what I'm feeling. Yeah. And and I this is also just goes to the husbands whose wives are going through these things that they can't even explain themselves. Yeah. I think just sit in the moment with them. Of course, you don't want your wife to break. I know it it comes from a really good place. Yeah. But also just sit in the moment of let them just feel broken for a bit, a little bit. Allow them to to, to sit in that pain yeah. and feel the magnitude yes. of it. Yeah. Yes, because I think when you try make them escape from it, yeah. it will it will come later. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So I, I I yeah, it didn't do a lot to my faith at that point. Okay. I was just yeah. I was just like, okay, so we move. I actually that time I, I was like, this time we will conceive in the name of Jesus. Yes. I was in that mode. Yeah. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> yeah, it didn't put me down as much okay. the, 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 that chemical pregnancy. I want to ask you a, a, a strange question mm. that I know it's a question that I get and I'm wondering if you got it even at this point. Yeah. When people would ask you, how many children do you have? Ooh. Do you did you feel the need to mention mm. the 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 yeah. miscarriages yes, you yeah. have had? Mm. You, like, would you count them as an, children that you have? Or yeah. Would you say I have the one child? Yeah. How and and even now, I'm sure you still get that question from people do. who don't know you. Yeah. How do you navigate that? What What is your answer? How many children do you have? Now, if you ask me, I'll tell you four. Yes. Um. So I do not count the miscarriages mm-hmm. because of just, I think it's too much for me. It's too yeah. much for you. For me. Yeah. Um. Because I'd have to tell you I have seven children. Yes. So, I mean. And then you have to explain. It's just too much means. for me. Yeah. yeah. So I do say four. Um, yeah. I, I, but I have three living with me. Yeah. So one is, yeah. It's, and the reason I count her is because. Of the whole thing, naming the child, buying things for the child, carrying to full term. Yeah. Yeah, that's the reason why yeah. I count her. But it's not to dismiss the rest, but it's just, I feel like it's just too much for yeah. me to, to have to explain to people. Yeah. Yeah, about all these miscarriages. Yeah. But if it's people I'm comfortable with, I do tell them. Yeah. But to be honest, I don't think I've talked about it. Mm-hmm. I think actually now is when people know publicly about yeah. Yeah. the three of them. Yeah. Yeah, because it's something I just kept it in place said of me because yeah there's a lot of shame that surrounds this yeah 
and I think part of your work and maybe what even you're doing with this podcast would be just to help people to feel less shame. Yes. And for us to share in that, for us to share also in the, that it does happen mm -hmm. and it's not your fault mm -hmm. and uh, it's not your body's fault. Yes. We really can't explain some things, yeah. but also, yeah. Yeah. So I, I actually had started probing my doctor to just get to the bottom of it and we mm -hmm. never got answers still today mm -hmm. um, about you know, because now it's recurring. Mm. So if it happens once, maybe it was bad luck, maybe something happened. Yeah. But now it's happening again and happening again. Yeah. But in most times they would say it's isolated cases. Mm -hmm. This happened nothing because is of this one. Yeah, yeah. nothing is related at all. Yeah. Huh. You know, you, yeah. You, you brought out such an important aspect, mm. uh, the aspect of shame that yes. we carry. Yes. And yet it's yes. not, as you've said, it's yeah. not anything you did. Yeah. Yeah. You couldn't have avoided it. Yeah. The doctor can't even figure out what exactly yeah, it was. Yeah. It's things that are so um, beyond us. That's true. And yet we still carry that shame yeah. as mm -hmm. women. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm hoping that right now, you know, there's a woman who's watching yeah. it who has just been told that she's lost her baby. Yes. And because, I, you know, I remember that moment, that, just that instant yes. Yes. for me when I had a miscarriage mm -hmm. of feeling like, how could my body let me down? Yeah. How could my body not carry yes. this child? Yes. And it was a mixture of shame, mm. disappointment. Mm. I was so hard on myself in that moment. Mm. Uh, but I remember a woman mm -hmm. who, when, when I had a DNC. Okay. And um, I remember a lady, one of our family friends, who yes. was there present when I was getting wheeled out of the whatever. Yes. And she came and she whispered in my ear and she said, Kambua, it's not your fault. It was like a, a lifeline for yes. me in yes. that moment. Yes. You know, you need to hear. it's not yeah. your fault. And I want to speak to any woman watching this right now. It's not your fault. It's not anything you did. It's not anything. You, there's nothing you could have done to prevent it. Um, I shared some statistics last time mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. one out of four women yes. miscarry. Yes. And especially in the first um, yes. trimester. Yes. And so um, I want us to take that garment of shame off of ourselves mm -hmm. and unburden ourselves mm -hmm. and know that trust that your body is doing the best it can and yes. trust that God has a great, great plan for you. Regard yes. Even in this moment, in this pain, he still has a great plan for you. So mm -hmm. Julie, I want to... Um, I want to take a moment to honor mm -hmm. a special baby, mm -hmm. Zara. Mm -hmm. um, and you tell us a little bit about Zara. Mm -hmm. I, I, I want to say this because I feel like Zara deserves a, just a full conversation yes. um, around who she was, yes. um, what she meant for you, how she changed you as a woman. Mm -hmm. And um, so we will we will come back and talk about that yeah. but I want to take a few minutes and mm -hmm. for you just to honor Zara because she's, she's been a part of this journey your journey yes. of motherhood yes, 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 she's yes. not here with us but yes. we will see her someday mm -hmm. she was a beautiful girl yes. <laughs> um, but I, I just want you to tell us at what point uh, you lost to Zara mm -hmm. and also tell us how you have navigated mm -hmm getting from that place of grief, yeah. deep, deep grief, yeah. and even getting to having another child, mm -hmm. you know, that you now have. Mm -hmm. Two more. Children. Two more <laughs> after, oh my gosh, two yes, more. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you have yes. had two more after yeah. that. Mm -hmm. um, and the reason I want you to talk about this is because there's so much fear, especially after you have had losses, yes. recurring yes. losses, and yes. then such a heavy yes. loss. Yes. Even just the courage to, carrying another yeah. another baby mm, so mm. tell us a little bit about zora oh my zora uh zora. yeah zora zora is i think she saved me um and then the, the circumstances that led to that are really tragic but i think she saved me in very many ways um so like so we had gone through two losses then we conceived her she was this promised child even her it's okay she was the baby who was supposed to just change everything for us. Everyone had prophesied that we would get, we would conceive around that time. I was sure I had seen her, not her, but I'd felt something about her, you know. Um, so she was the child was coming to now sort all these problems we've, we'd had. I conceive her very tough pregnancy. Mm. Um, we find out it's a girl. It's exciting. 
I, you know, everything in me is just so excited. We buy things, we prepare for her. But there was just something about her future that God wasn't giving me access to it. Every time I'm pregnant, I pray for my baby's futures. You know, I start imagining them as a three-year-old, four-year-old. I was not seeing anything. Yeah. Probably sir, and, you know, I was trying so hard to just, God, like, what type of child am I praying for? What's her personality? Show me yeah. uh, how she interact with her brother. I could not mm-hmm. access anything. Yeah. And it was very hard. And now, because I keep prayer journals and I do journal a lot, and actually I'd want to encourage you if you're pregnant yeah. um, you're struggling mm-hmm. um, uh, you know you you know you're going through a miscarriage mm-hmm. j- just write down mm-hmm. try yeah it's very therapeutic and yeah. then also when you go back to those notes yes they they, they really i don't know yeah. for me it's been healing yeah yeah mm-hmm. so with, with all the prayers i'd made and the people mm-hmm. who'd pray over me they'd always say you'll carry to term yes because by that time we, we had uh, we had a problem we're not carrying to term right i was losing them at the eight point mm-hmm. um you know so when i'm before 10 weeks i'm usually handled with a lot of care i'm mm-hmm. like an egg mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so um we 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 to live back on my eye uh, she was an egg yeah you know till the the last um, day, which was 37 weeks, um, three days, and I was supposed to give birth four days. Was it four days? Seven days after that. Yeah. Yeah, seven days after that, because she was born on the 7th, and she was supposed to be born on the 14th. Yeah. Um, that was when I was due for my CS. Mm. And God called her home in very mysterious circumstances yeah. that we still don't have answers to. Mm. Um, and you can imagine that after two losses that had just happened. Yeah. So this baby is supposed to heal the whole family. Yeah. Shosho, Guka, my mm. mom, everybody. Yeah. Then she just, yeah, slept. Just like that. No reason, no explanation. Yeah. Um, yeah. I shared pictures with you of her and mm-hmm. she was pink when I held her. Yeah. It's like there was like, you know, it's I, I, I feel like I'm going to go mad every time I think about it because I'm like, I still have no answers. Yeah. No medical answers. Yeah. I still don't have any. She didn't look dead. Yeah. In my opinion. Yeah. So. I don't know. I don't know. I don't really know what happened there. Yeah. And it's one of those things I've battled with God for so long. Yeah. But this is also to encourage someone who's in that deep, dark place that I was in, that yeah. life in Asia. Yeah. Or I'd already labeled myself as, uh, um, you know, I, baby's dying in my womb and yeah. now. <laughs> it's like yeah. proving this is now the the the, the, mori, the star. Yeah. <laughs> that nail on the coffin. No, yes, yeah, like nail. for sure. For yeah. sure now. Yeah. But now... God yeah. gave me two more. Yeah, he did. Like immediately. He um, did. So, mm-hmm. and that I've carried to term and they've come out. Yeah. Well, not to term fully, but. Yes. They're fine and, yeah. you know, they're okay. Yeah. They're thriving boys. Yes, so they, they are. They're, <laughs> they're at home and they're fat. <laughs> the fat babies <laughs> that you wanted. Yeah. Gosh, I'm, yeah. you know, Julie, um, I, I, I remember, and, and we will, as I've said, we will come and now just yes. talk about this yes. properly. Yeah. Uh, but I remember thinking about you I had mm. had a dream so sometimes mm. i'll have like mm. uh it's almost like a, a vision it's yes. like a dream yeah. Yeah. where you you feel like you're awake you're asleep mm. but you're sort of awake mm-hmm. and i know the difference between when i'm just having a regular dream and, yes. and when god is quickening me about mm. somebody and usually it's people close to me yeah and um so i remember that morning waking up and it was still like i think it might have been about five in the morning very mm. early in the morning mm-hmm. And it was you on my heart. Yes. And I cried so much. Mm-hmm. So in the morning when it was daylight, I called mm-hmm. a friend of ours, a mutual mm-hmm. friend of ours who um, I knew was very close to you at the yes. time. Yes. And I, rem- and I remember asking her, how is Julie? Mm-hmm. And then she said, let me call you right back. Mm-hmm. And then she called me a few minutes back, uh, later and she yeah. said, Julie lost the baby. Mm-hmm. And I remember just what I felt and I remembered uh, what had why you were so heavy on my heart and I'm why I'm sharing this is to let you know that even in the moments where you feel like I'm all alone that God still quickens people to stand for you yeah. when you can't stand for yourself absolutely you know in the many times where I feel like it's been a tag for yes. me and you you know I have felt the things you, you've you felt I I have you have said to me things that I have said to you, <laughs> you know, and uh, there are times I also, I was just like, I, I am doomed, <laughs> doomed to fail. Um, so that, that those feelings are yes. so valid. Yes. 
but also to let you know, Julie, you know, you've said, I've, I've heard you say certain things. Like I felt my, my womb was a, a cemetery, a mm. graveyard. Mm -hmm. I've heard you say, I feel like I go mad every time mm. I think about it. Yeah. And I just want to speak to you as your friend yes. to speak mm. life to you, Amen. Amen. Um, that your Amen. womb is a place for Amen. life. Life, Amen. abundant, thriving Amen. life, um, and 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 Thank no you. death, no Amen. death. Um, I I speak life over every part of Amen. who Julie is, yes. and um, I pray for your children for such yes. a special covering Amen. over them Amen. and the assurance in your heart. Yes, you know yes. I usually say the Malachi is having baby daycare in yes. heaven. Yes. Uh, Zara is yes, up there, yes, you know, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> and to always just that assurance yes. as as believers of knowing that it, our children are not they did not disappear to no. an unknown place. No, even the ones you lost yes. through miscarriage, yeah, yeah. that one day. No yeah. one day. Can you imagine getting to heaven and, and all this? And like babies are running. There's an image I saw once somewhere, yeah. and I don't a very long time ago, but I didn't screenshot it or anything. Yeah. And this it's an old lady, she's now on her deathbed, and her two kids are right by her, and they are crying so yeah. hard. But now she's thinking about heaven, and I can see two babies twingy. Yes. And they're all like they can't wait to meet her. Yes. And to me, for so beautiful. Isn't it? Yeah, because I was like, okay, I love my boys with all my heart, yes. you know. Yes. But now also they are those who I never got to interact with and yes. you know, to see yes. um them becoming, you know, any you know, whatever God had intended for them. Yeah. But I know they're in a safe place. Yeah. So where I sit right now, yeah. I don't sit as a defeated person. Yeah. I sit as someone who's overcome. Mm -hmm. God has rewritten my story. Amen. And maybe one day we'll talk about the way we contend yes. for that word which God has yes. spoken. Yes. We you just don't sit there in pity. Yeah. There's a point of crying. Okay, sir, wipe your tears. Yeah. Now remove that sackcloth. Mm hmm and the wage war. war. <laughs> now it's like for God uh, hey, yeah. There's a pastor who says, Oh yeah, I'm a uh -huh. I'll come, Mama, you come. <laughs> One of us has to move. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm a new year. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Oh, my goodness, Julie. Um, as we finish, mm -hmm. um, I want you to speak to a woman yes. who right now has is feeling like there's nothing ahead for me. I have just been told, like you were told, maybe I'm infertile. I don't stand a chance. Um, or a woman who's been told, I'm sorry, there's no heartbeat. Those words that we dread so much. Or uh, she's been told something is wrong. Or, um, you know, just a, a moment of devastation at whatever mm. point she is in mm. Um, mm. on her motherhood journey. Yeah. Can you speak to that woman? Yes. What would you tell her? First, I would tell her she's not alone, that there are so many of us who have been through there. And I'm so sorry that she's going through this. That I'm sorry this has happened to you. Um, I think people don't acknowledge that. People don't emphasize that, that I am so sorry this has happened to you because yeah. it's unfair. Mm. It's unfair, and I know that for sure. But since we are here, mm. I am so sorry that has happened to you. Mm. And you will just need to look inside. It's going to be a very painful looking, yeah. but just looking inside and start addressing yourself from the inside. Yes. There's nothing wrong with you. You're not cast. You're not something. Mm. There's something God has in store for you and you'll have to contend with that. But before even you get there, just yeah. be in the moment. Like when you feel like today I'm going to wail. Yeah. Wail. Yeah. Today I want to dress up and go to the mall to do that. Mm. Um, allow the people around you to care for you. Mm. And if you need space, just also tell them uh, today maybe not yeah um yeah i think i think i'll just tell people allow yourself to feel what you're feeling yeah yeah and i think now after the so the other losses i'd, I'd allowed people to just come in take care of me but yes. after my daughter i was like let me control this whole thing now mm. um I, let me let me let me feel not control but let me feel what i'm feeling if i feel like today i'm gonna die let me just feel that way and it's it's so hard to explain that, but yeah. feel what you're feeling. Mm -hmm. Feel it deeply. Yeah. Feel that loss. Feel it. Cry. Do what you need to do. Mm -hmm. But just don't get stuck. Then we had this conversation with you so many times yeah. about not getting stuck. Yes. And not getting stuck is hard. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's hard, but mm -hmm. for those people who are, who have seen now come to the other side, yes. it's those people who chose not to get stuck. Yes. And you've been stuck before, right? Yes. People will share with people one day. Yes. After yes. certain laws. Mm -hmm. um, but know this for, okay, 
Yeah. This is what has happened. Yeah. How do I move? How do forward? I collect myself? Yes. And and start the process now of okay, seeing different doctors. Yes. Pursuing other, mm-hmm. you know, other type of help. Mm-hmm. But in the moment, just feel what you're feeling. Yeah. And I'm very sorry this has happened to you. And you're wow. not alone. Wow. Mm-hmm. I couldn't have said it any better, Julie. Yeah, and, yeah. Um, you know, first of all, thank you so much for being so honest, so vulnerable with us again. Um, and just making your heart and your life open for people to also draw healing from that. Yeah. You know, and um, I I just want to encourage anybody who's watching us. If you have walked this journey, you're walking this journey, go ahead. You can share it with us on the or follow me on my social media pages. Tell us what your story is. Let me know where you are watching us from. What has resonated with you when we're speaking to Julie? What proper support looks like for you? What you feel mm. we, people could have done better for you or can do better for you, family, friends, so that we can have build a community that is knowledgeable and yes. um, just knowing how to support you best. You yes. know, I usually say that when when someone is going through the motions of whatever it is, they know best what. Um, what they need, what mm. support, mm. you know, looks or feels like. So tell us, what do you feel would be the appropriate way for the people who love you to support you? We'd love to have these conversations. And um, of course, I'll be bringing more people as we continue on, as we continue to journey. I'll bring uh, Mama Zion back here at some point. <laughs> at many points um you know just to keep unpacking these conversations but thank you so much for joining us today go ahead and follow like share subscribe comment and all of that fabulous thing it's been so 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 awesome having you here with us keep it right here on being kambua god bless you i remember that after giving birth the emptiness like there was an emptiness i couldn't explain Mm -hmm. because when i had the baby I, i didn't want to see him because I felt, <sighs> okay. yeah. I didn't want to see him at the time because I felt like it would ruin yeah. that first moment mm. with a baby for me. Mm.